So the Jews are still in the desert, and God commands them to build the Mishkan, the tabernacle, and its utensils, the holy ark, the table, the menorah, the altar. And in order to build the Mishkan and the utensils, one of the building requirements is wood, a particular type of wood, atse shitim. Some say it's acacia wood. Some say it's a type of cedar. I don't know. You'd have to ask Indiana Jones. Be that as it may, there's an obvious problem. If you're in the desert and you see trees growing, then you must be Bugs Bunny looking what he likes to call a mirage. So where are the Jews going to find wood in the desert? Fortunately, many, many, many years before, their forefathers, our forefathers, had planned ahead. Abraham, Abraham, back in Israel in Beersheba, knew prophetically that we'd someday need that particular type of wood in the desert. So he planted Atzei Shittim in Israel. When it was time to go down to Egypt, his grandson Jacob, Yaakov, uprooted those trees, brought them to Egypt, and replanted them. When he did that, he didn't just solve the problem of where are we going to get the right wood in the desert. He also made sure that the wood we'd use for building the Mishkan, the tabernacle, and the Aron, the holy ark, would be wood from trees that were planted by our forefather Abraham for that purpose, elevating them in their level of spirituality. But that's not all he was doing. He wasn't just facilitating the building of those utensils. He was building bridges. He was building a bridge back from the Jewish slaves in Egypt to their forefathers in Israel. And he was building a bridge forward from those same Jewish slaves to the Holy Land. Because during those cold, dark, hard, terrible years of slavery, all a Jew had to do to have his faith restored was to walk by that forest of faith and be reminded, our forefather Abraham planted those trees. Our forefather Jacob uprooted them and replanted them here. And someday, we're going to uproot them. We're going to take them, and we're eventually going to go back to the promised land. Now we can understand Moshe's father's name, Amram. Amram means mighty nation. What group of slaves would give any of their kids the name mighty nation? Only a people that knows where they came from and is confident that they're going to get out of that slavery because they know where they're eventually heading. So that's the faith that sustained us during the slavery. That's the faith that later sustained us during so many bitter, horrifying exiles until we came back to the promised land in 1948. And that's the faith that continues to sustain us. Mm -hmm.